before I go into the myth busting, I just want to talk to you about a formula that I now use to help my students uh, come up with pricing and also become really comfortable with pricing because pricing is uncomfortable. So now we're going to do a little bit of visualisation. Uh, I use visualisation all the time in my business, in my drawing, uh, for any goals planned. Basically, I live my life <laughs> visualising. If I've got to go and do something that I don't normally do, I will visualise it. So I find it an incredibly, incredibly powerful technique to use for, for anything. <clears throat> we are going to start with working out a price that you find really comfortable. Okay, so it's not necessary, it's not going to be a high price. If you're just thinking about pricing your work, this is going to be a relatively low price. And we can take my price of £40. Okay, so if you feel that 40 is too much and £10, actually, you know, I feel £10 is enough. I feel okay asking for £10. Then you go ahead and ask for £10. Whatever it is that you feel comfortable with, that's what you're going to start with. So you're going to take your comfortable price and with that price there's no panic, there's no feeling overwhelmed, there's no feeling, oh gosh, oh, you know, nobody's going to buy that. You think, mm, do you know what, actually, I, I feel okay with that. I feel okay with that price. So we're going to take £40, I feel okay with that price. Good. So next what we're going to do is we're going to think about, okay, so if I sell my work for £40, how am I going to feel about that? How am I going to feel? How... What am I going to buy? What will I be able to pay for if I sell my work for £40? Um, you know, I might be able to get some new pencils or new paper or something like that. Okay, so we're feeling really comfortable. Next, what I want you to do is I want you to take that price and I want you to increase it slightly. And I want you to increase it so that you start to feel a little bit uncomfortable. Not, not outright panic, but a little bit uncomfortable. So you're thinking, oh gosh, you know, we're not having sort of like heart palpitations just yet. We're feeling a bit, oh yeah, oh I think I could sell for that, but I, oh I, I do, mm, I feel a little bit uncomfortable. But actually, do you know what? Let's let, ooh, okay, let's go for it. So I'm going to push my forty to sixty. I'm going to push my forty pounds to sixty pounds. I'm okay. I'm not feeling overwhelmed. I'm not going to have a heart attack. Um, I'm, I'm okay with that. And now what I want you to do is I want you to really think about what that 60 pounds will feel like. So we're gonna sell a piece for 60 pounds. What will that mean for me? How will that feel? What will I be able to buy with that? What will I be able to pay for? That extra little bit of money, how, how, what difference is that going to make? And I want you to kind of sit with that for a little bit and think about it. Do you know what, actually, you know, an extra 20 pounds on top of what I was already asking, it means I could kind of, you know, replenish my pencil stock. I could buy that more expensive paper that I've been really wanting to try out. Um, you know, I could have a takeaway on a Friday. All of these little things. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling okay with that now. So now what I want you to do, and you need to stick with me on this because it works, and I want you to stay really, really positive. I want you to take that 60 pounds and I want you to add a zero onto the end of it, okay? And I can see you all sitting there going, oh, no, Bonnie, no. <laughs> Don't just, no, no. <laughs> so we're now looking at 600 pounds. And I want you to just sit there and just in your wildest dreams it might be, what would it feel like? And I want you to stay with me on this and I want you to stay really, really positive. None of that negativity starting to flit in. Don't let that, that negative inner voice come in and go, just absolutely no, go back to your 40. You know, I want that positivity. I want you to really think about what it would feel like. Um, you know, visualise Visualise how it would feel if somebody handed over that £600, put £600 in your bank, if you were downloading it, you know, moving it from PayPal to your bank. How would that feel? That would feel really good. That would feel really good. You know, your worth has gone right up to £600. Think about, you know, how your life would change if you were doing, I don't know, four pieces a month for £600. Think about how much else you would be able to put in 
you'd be able to pay your bills, you'd still have time to be able to do originals or, you know, do whatever you wanted to do. Really think about how your life would change, how you would feel, what it would be like if your pieces were earning £600 for the, the smallest of pieces. Think about what you'd be able to pay for. Think about how your life would change. That's a really, really good feeling. And, you know, you might have to work a little bit on this and you might have to kind of do this a few times to be able to then get into that comfortable feeling of visualisation. It's a, such a powerful technique. So we're feeling, yeah, do you know what? It'd be really good, wouldn't it, if my pieces were £600. So now what I want you to do, and I, and I know you're all sitting there thinking, I know what she's going to do next. We're going to add another zero to that £600. We're going to make it £6,000. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Can you imagine? I've sold a piece or I've taken commissions and I am charging £6,000 for one of my pieces. How utterly amazing is that? And it is completely doable because you just have to go into a gallery and you see that that's what people are, are paying more than that. How would that feel? What difference would that make if one of your pieces, were, if you, just one piece, you just have to do one piece a month and you would be earning £72,000 a year. Can you imagine what that would feel like? Can you imagine the difference it would make to your life, to your family's life? Oh my goodness, and people are buying your work for £6,000. How does that feel? That feels absolutely amazing. It feels amazing. And you can just sit and just think about how it would feel. Close your eyes if it helps, but really, really think about how that would feel if you were, if you, were you know, selling your work for £6,000. That's a lot of money. And now what I want you to do, I want you to come back to your slightly uncomfortable price. So ours was 60. I'm sitting now, I'm thinking, 60 quid? No, I'm gonna make it 100. I'm gonna make it 100 because actually, I I've been thinking about what it's gonna be like to sell it for 600. And I've been thinking about what it's gonna be like selling it for 6,000. I'm thinking I'm gonna start with 100 and I feel really confident with that and I feel happy with that. And I'm gonna start with 100. And whatever you come up with, if you work, if you play around with this little uh, sort of formula that, that I've given you here, you're really, really going to start to be able to get comfortable. You're going to be able to start thinking about what your life could be like in the future if you just priced your work that little bit higher. We've gone from 40 to 60 to 100 and we feel confident with that. And think about, you know, you're selling your work for 100 pounds. In a year's time, if you up it slightly, you could be selling your work for 200. Then in two years time, it could be 600. Or it could be 1,000, whatever you want to put your price at. But it's about feeling confidence. It's about feeling okay with the pricing. Um, and that's something to really, really, really think about and play around with that little sort of scenario that I've given you because it really, really works. Now, I want to just share some myths with you around pricing. And you will see these coming up all over Facebook. <laughs> you know, you'll see established artists giving you all of this rubbish about, you know, why you can't increase your pricing or why you can't become a, an artist because, you know, there's too many artists out there. So number one, the market is saturated. The market is saturated with pet portrait artists or digital artists or this artist or that artist. Market's saturated, so you've got no chance. There's too many people doing it. Well, let me tell you what a myth this is. You are so lucky going into a market where there are so many people doing the same thing because it means that there is demand for it. It means that people are wanting what these people are selling. Otherwise, they wouldn't be in business. If you were going to do something and you went out there and there was like, oh God, there's only 10 people throughout the whole world doing this. Oh my goodness, you would be in trouble because it means that there's no demand for it. You know, yeah, you might have those niche things where somebody's doing something really, really particular, but you look at a marketplace where there's lots of people doing it, it means that there is demand and it means that the people out there are wanting what you're selling. And that is a brilliant, brilliant thing. 
Another myth, number two, um, we're going through a cost of living crisis. And do you know what? If you listen to the news and you listen to the right bit of TikTok, you will totally get that we are in a cost of living crisis crisis and that nobody can do anything and nobody can afford anything however if you don't listen to the news and you don't watch that part of TikTok you will know that there are so many people out there who are still buying luxury items I just have to go out we've been going out every Saturday taking my dad out for lunch while my mum's in hospital we've been going out every Saturday we've had to book and the places we've been going to are heaving and they're not, you know, they're not sort of like a cheap cafe. They're the Ivy in Harrogate, Betty's. They are heaving. We're having to queue. People are spending money. So do not believe that people aren't buying art because they really, really are. Um, you know, if you live in a scarcity mindset, if you live believing that people aren't buying and you believe that people can't afford stuff, and do you know what? There are people who can't afford stuff and it's awful. But when you're running a business, you need to know that there are people out there who are buying art and are buying luxury items. So don't live in a scarcity mindset and believe that it's not happening. So my final myth, myth number three, <laughs> Artists who are selling their work cheaply are stopping artists who are selling their work for more money from getting clients because the cheap artists are getting everybody buying their work. And that is a complete and utter load of codswallop. It really, really is. If you think about it, so say you've got somebody selling their work for £10, okay, and you think, if they're selling their work for £10 and I'm trying to sell mine for 400 how on earth am I going to get anybody to pay for my work? Because they're all going to be queuing down the street to buy Joe Bloggs's down there for £10. Well, honestly, you cannot be further from the truth. If you're selling something for £10, the people who would buy for £10 are very likely to try and haggle you down to £5. They're very likely to tell you that John down the road can actually do it for, for free. So they're going to go with him and not the £10 one. Um, if you want to sell your work for £10, do you know what? Go ahead. Um, you know, you're, you're not going to make a living from it. But if it's a hobby and you want to sell it for 10 quid, great. That, that's great. But if you're worrying that those people who are selling for £10 are going to take all of your custom, then you couldn't be further from the truth. If you are selling your work for £400, £500, £600, pounds, say, the people who are going to be spending £600 would not touch a £10 portrait with a barge pole. And the reason why is because they don't class it as a quality piece of work. In their eyes, they see what you pay for is what you get. So if you pay £10, you're not, you're going to get £10 quality. We know that's not true because there are people out there selling stuff for 10 quid, and it's beautiful. Um, but the psychology behind pricing it doesn't work that way. So you sell something for £600, you are not targeting the same audience that somebody who is paying or charging £10 for. Completely different audience. And your audience would not even be looking at somebody who's charging £10 because they think it was rubbish. So that's something to really, really, really get to grips with, really start to understand. It's all about your audience, all about who you are uh, putting yourself in front of. That's a whole different conversation, trying to find your audience. But if you're selling your work for 600, you do not need to worry that the, the people who are selling for 10 pounds are taking all of the people and taking all of the orders and bookings because it's not true. So I hope that has been useful. Um, pricing is a very emotive subject. It's something that people really worry about. Um, a lot of it, most of it comes down to confidence. So if you can build your confidence around your work, also, if you can start being really proud of what you do, so whenever you do something, you become really proud of it. Make sure that <laughs> when you finish your work, if you are one of those people who likes to um, pull it to pieces and post on social media and say, oh, I've done a rubbish job with this, blah, blah, blah. 
then I would really encourage you to start thinking about the stuff that's gone well with your work. Start thinking about all of the good stuff with your work. The, the, the stuff that you're not as happy with, make a plan of action to increase your development around that part. So if you really struggle with um, dog's noses, but the rest of your fur and everything is great, then make a plan of action. You know, practice your dog's noses. Um, you know, work out what you can do differently to make your dog noses better. If you struggle with values, do some work around values. Really, really look at how you can improve that. You know, do a tutorial or just work on something that's got really high values and, you know, increase that skill level. Because as much as you feel proud of your pieces and as long as you're feeling really happy with what you're doing, you're going to feel much, much more confident in pricing your work at a reasonable rate. Nobody wants to be pricing their work at £10, you know, and you don't have to price your work at £10. You can increase that rate. You can make it much, much, much more than that. And you can make a fantastic living from your art, but you've got to kind of get comfortable with what it is that you're valuing your yourself ultimately and your art at. <laughs>